Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have one of our podcast community members. She has her own podcast in our community, and she is just an amazing person. It is Debbie Adams, and Debbie has um, a whole series of different books. They're very inspirational. They're very motivational, and I'm very excited to tell you today because she had just launched her new book, and we're going to talk about it, and it's about the heart and how, how important it is to keep your heart pure. So Debbie, tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and tell them about you know how important the heart is and why you wrote your book and, and what it is and, and how it could help others. Hello, I am Debbie Adams and I live in Middle Tennessee. <clears throat> and I have been an author now for, um, I think about three or four years. And I've got three print books and I have one ebook and and I started with my ebook and I wrote my books because God spoke to my heart and told me that I have a testimony to share, which now I realize that I do have a testimony. I have a testimony of faith and how God led me through every life experience so far that I have been through from cancer to uh, a tornado, to job loss, to marriage um, dissolvement. So whatever you're going through, God will help you to go through it. And my current book, um, the one that just got launched is um, Straighten Your Crown. If I can get it, it won't. Okay. It's okay. Okay. It don't matter. It, it won't show today for some reason. Um Anyway, it's Straighten Your Crown, Navigating Life's Challenges with Grace. And this book is about our heart. And what is in our heart comes out in the words that we say, the actions that we do. And so God placed on my heart to tell me that I need to write a book about how we act in everyday life. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we not have love in our hearts toward others? Right. And that's basically what my book is about. It, and I talk about keeping negativity out of your life, being compassionate and loving toward others, because Jesus is the one who taught us how to love. Mm -hmm. And he says in his word to love others like I love you. Yes. And I realize sometimes that is hard to do and I've been there. I've been there and I've had people and I have to do a lot of praying because you want to just snap at people for acting crazy, uh, acting stupid. Uh, not that the person is stupid, but their yeah. actions are stupid the way they act. And um, so that's, that's why I wrote that. I think that's why he told me to write this book. Um, and I want others to see that it's mind, it's in your mind, it's mindfulness. Yeah. What is in your mind goes to your heart. So keep your heart pure, keep your mind focused on what is important and God and being faithful to God and being compassionate toward others. That's what's in, important. And that's what I talk about in my book. You know, I you mentioned a really important factor is letting go. Um, you know, people do things in life. They say things that are either cruel or mean or vindictive, and it hurts us as people, mm -hmm. as humans. And we don't sometimes don't understand why the other person does or says what they do. But, you know, it boils down to forgiveness. And you were mentioned about that. And are there some ways that you can suggest to the audience about forgiveness, how we can forgive those who hurt us. Because I think getting past there and getting past the forgiveness point, we can open our hearts then. Because right now, like we said, our hearts are filled with negativity, anger, resentment, because the person hurt us. So the first step I think is forgiveness. Now, how would you mm -hmm. suggest from your own experiences, how did you let go and how were you able to forgive those who hurt you or those are traumatic events in your life that occurred that you had to get past the i think the biggest 
thing that I had to get over was when my husband left me when I was going through cancer treatments. Mm. And that just broke my heart into pieces. And it that's not something that you would just automatically just say, oh, okay, I forgive you. Yeah. It took me, it took me several years to get past that. And even now, sometimes when I think about it, I feel this surging in my heart. And mm -hmm. it's like, no, no, it's I'm I'm getting that out of my heart. I'm not even gonna think that anymore. But I think the way that I did it, you have to focus on something else. Don't focus on what the situation is that where you got hurt. Don't focus on the person. And if at all possible, get away from the person. Sometimes you have to remove people from your life in order to have peace in your life. And I, I'm now remarried to a wonderful man. And, um, you know, and that, and that helped a whole, whole lot when God brought my husband now into my life. And um, sometimes things come back from your past. They want to haunt you. And I think mm -hmm. that that is most likely Satan trying to bring stuff back and saying, hey, look what happened, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah. But you have to, to to really get over forgiveness. You have to ask God to help you first off. And after you ask God, you have to get rid of the bad situations. You have to get rid of the negativity in your heart because you will be negative about all this hurtful, all this pain that you experience. Yes. You need to be around things, be around people that are positive, um, volunteer for, you know, local communities to help others. Right. And I found that helping others, serving in your church, that is the number one best way to um, help you other than God uh, helping you to um, find forgiveness for, you know, whoever or whatever situation. I think that's so true. And have you ever thought about, um, you know, a lot of people had talked about, um, you know, because first of all, when people are, are like that and they do or say mean things or their actions are mean and cruel, it's not our problem. They're the ones with the problem, mm -hmm. but yet they've hurt us. So now we have to learn how to let go and forgive. And sometimes they say things like writing it down on a piece of paper, because we don't have to hear the person say, I forgive you, but we have to learn how to incorporate forgiveness into our life and forgive them and then just mm -hmm. move on. Have you ever done anything like write a letter or maybe in a journal, like, you know, uh, say, I forgive you, you know, and just, you know, learn how to just like incorporate, you know, realizing that you're not the one with the problem, but I forgive you because in this situation, you had your own issues going on. And even though what you did wasn't right, I forgive you. Have you ever done anything like that to try to help you along the pathway of forgiveness? Yeah, when it comes to forgiveness, um, you have to forgive yourself first. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to forgive others, you have to forgive yourself because you might have been involved in the situation. You might not have helped the situation, but whatever, you have to forgive yourself. You have to learn to love yourself again. Yeah. And that's what I that's what I had to do. And I have kept a journal in the past and right. wrote down stuff, you know, that was happening. And I've never written a letter or anything, but I have kept a journal. I've got several journals on different things that I've kept. Um, but, you know, we, we, sometimes we don't love ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, we use it, which I've done this in the past. We use the excuse, well, this happened, that happened. That's why my life is going terrible. But you're not loving yourself. You're not seeing that you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. And you are capable of doing whatever your desires are, whatever God has for you to do. Right. And I talk about, you know, in the book, finding a purpose in life. Right. And I mean, several years ago, who would have thought I would have never have thought that I would become an author and speaking, you know, on podcast. Right. And 
so, you know, growing up, I love reading books. I would write little st- short stories and I, lo- you know, I love doing things like that. Yeah. And, and that was my, God, that was God's purpose for my life way back when. Right. And sometimes I think God uses life experiences to um, form us into where and what we need to be. Right. And, you know, it's like, you know, like you said, writing a letter, not sending it, but writing a letter like I did writing in a journal. And, um, but my ex-husband, I did have a chance. He called me, um, I guess about a month ago, just out of the blue. And, you know, when he calls me, my heart just like, (laughs) you know, what does he want? But I have to let go of that. You know, that's another thing you have to do. You have to let go of that. And he apologized to me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and he was talking, you know, about, you know, me, you know, what he had done and whatever. And I told him, I said, I forgave you a long time ago, which I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been, I don't know, 20 years, I guess now. And so, you know, when you get, when you get rid of the bad in your heart, the bad in your mind, in your mindset, you can get to that point where you can forgive others. And then when they happen to come back or you see them, that you get a phone call, you see them, whatever, you can be cordial to them. And, you know, you can't do that otherwise, because if he had called me before, you know, I would have probably, you know, snapped back at him or whatever. Right. But, you know, for God, God forgave with this being Easter, Good Friday. Mm-hmm. I want to bring this up too. God, God forgave us of all of the sins, all of our sins, you know, by um, being crucified on that cross at Calvary. Yeah. And he bore all of that pain and hurt for our sins. He forgave us. Right. So why are we not as being able to forgive others if god can forgive us and suffer all the pain that no human being is can ever suffer like he did right if he can if he can suffer and forgive us why can't we forgive others yeah and that's that's basically my point in the book on that chapter i think that's a great point and i and i like the fact that you talk about letting go to the negativity in our lives because i think that's a big thing i think we have if you have negativity and, and negative energy, you're going to attract negative people. If you can let go of those negative people in your life and mm-hmm. surround yourself with positive people, people that are like-minded uh, individuals, or even people that are above you that are, that you could, you want to strive to their level, all your energy will kind of resonate with one another and it will be a, a positive influence in your life and help you elevate to the next mm-hmm. level. And it also will help clean your heart and make your heart pure when you get rid of that negativity that's around you in your life. Yeah. I mean, as long as you keep um, negativity in your life, I mean, you're not going to be the best person you can be. Right. And that's, I mean, God showed me that God has shown me a lot, I say in the past 10 years, and especially he showed me a lot in the past three years in writing these books. Yeah. And I mean, if you want God to really speak to your heart and show you what is important in your life and in everybody's life, write a book and start yeah. writing on faith. And because as I write, God is showing me things as well. Right. And, you know, what I'm writing is coming from him and he knows who's going to read my book and, you know, and who needs to hear or who needs to read what I'm writing. Right. But, you know, he also, you know, is talking to me too. You know, it's like, hey, you know, this in your life or that in your life. So, yeah, that that was a hard thing for me getting rid of negativity as I'm sure a lot of people. And if you can find a way to get rid of negativity, you can live your best life. 
And I can say I'm living my best life right now. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. You know, I, I feel like it's it's so important. Do you do any kind of um, spiritual exercises? Because it's so important to have a pure heart. It's so important to, you know, um, having a pure heart and being able to be, um, um, you know, because when you have a pure heart, you emotionally can connect with others. You can emotionally mm -hmm. share love with others and not expect anything back. You just have, you're just, you Fill your body with good, positive emotions, feelings, everything about you. And you're able to share that love with others. And, you know, are there anything that you do that helps you as a person be able to keep your heart pure and to be able to share that positive love with others? I've always loved helping people. Even as a child, I, you know, I would help other kids, you know, if I saw a need. Yeah. And. That is one way, and I still do that to this day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is one way that I stay close, that helps me to stay close to God mm -hmm. and help me to keep my heart here and where it needs to be. Because if you are helping others yeah. and, you know, you are get, uh, you are most giving of yourself emotionally, yeah, you might. Be, you know, because I'll see people sometimes, you know, and I'll pray to God and it's like, they look like they're down for a reason, you know, yeah. is there something that I can do for them? And, you know, sometimes even just saying hello to a person, um, you know, smiling at them, it, you know, or give them $20, you know, if you or $10, whatever. And, you know, just being there just letting them see that you, that a person, you might even not even know the person, right. just let them, let them see that there is someone who cares and who, you know, and is acting like they care about their well being. That will help a person more than anything. It is so true. Cause I do stuff like that and what a difference it makes. Like you'll see the person sometimes just light up, you know, mm -hmm. you can compliment them on their smile or you can compliment them on the blouse they're wearing. And you'll just see like a, a glow, a smile. Mm -hmm. You see that you touched you know, something in their heart and it makes a difference because not everybody's life is full of, of joy and happiness. People are struggling, going through things, or they might have trauma in their life, or they might have had trauma in the past and they can't get over it. But someone coming out of the blue and being nice and being kind and showing love and showing care, you know, can make a huge difference on somebody and can really mm -hmm. change their whole outlook for the day. And maybe, you know, somehow, some way it could help them, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that's where, you know, they start looking at life a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's the main point of my book or all of my books, basically, <clears throat> because, you know, my last book talked about how God will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. That was a good, that was a good book too. And this one is basically a continuation of God and his faithfulness, but I, I, I have it more on our, how we react, how we feel, you know, because like mm -hmm. you said, you know, you never know what a person is really going through, you know, unless right. it's a good friend, they're going to, you know, tell exactly. what they're going through. But, you know, like somebody you see at church, you know, you might, you know, say, ah, good morning. How are you? You know, and they'll say, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. But inside, you know, they're, they're unhappy they're sad whatever yeah and so that is why I feel like God wanted me to write that book because this world is so evil mm -hmm. and you know it's it's with the economy and the world the whole country the way it is going right now I mean only God knows what our future holds and yeah. whether whether we're going to get back to where our country used to be or not yeah um and so that's why I feel like God wanted me to write about, you know, how your heart is, how your emotion is and what's in your mindset and yeah. how to keep your mindset pure and, and don't allow any negativity or any evil, any bad stuff in your mind. Because when you do, it's got to, you know, automatically go to your heart. Yeah. And you know, the title of my book was Straighten Your Crown and it's got a crown on it. And, you know, we hear you, 
we hear about the um, Queen of England, you know, and she has the fancy crown on her head. But the crown that I'm talking about is the crown in your heart. And a lot of times we don't think about the crown in our heart. Mm -hmm. And if we have Jesus, and if we know Jesus personally, you know, we have the Holy Spirit in our heart and that's yeah. our crown. But if we don't know Jesus, then the crown is still in our heart. Right. But it's the crown that covers our heart with good feelings, a positivity, you know, and it's keeping out all of the bad and evil and the negativity. Right. And so, so you know, I'm, this book is basically, you know, trying to lead people to find their purpose in life, be happy in life, find a reason to smile. Exactly. That's amazing. Now, if you wanted to take what we've talked about today, you wanted to take it and really emphasize on some important things so, so the listeners could understand better, what were the, what are some of the important factors that you'd like to get across today to the listeners? The number one important factor would be, if you don't know Jesus, find Jesus. This, this time being Easter, whether you have been to church before or not, yes. go to church on Easter and you will be amazed at how blessed you will be. Right. And the second thing is try to get around people that are influencing you. Try to get around people that are a positive influence. Yes. Yes. And people that will encourage you, people that will inspire you, um, stay around those people. Yes. And try and think about what you're putting in your mind mm -hmm. and try to keep your mindset as healthy and as pure as you can. And that way, what if your mindset is right, your heart will be right. Yes. So true. And so that. Yeah, that's the two main things that I want people to see when they read my book. And where can people find your book? They can find it on every online um, bookstore. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, Books A Million, Target, Walmart. Um, it's at Chapters in Canada. And um, you can also... Um, go to my website and it's information about my book and links to go buy my book. And my website is Debbie Adams books dot biz. And um, you can also email me and my email address is Debbie at Debbie Adams books dot com. That's amazing. I, I love it. I, I think this book is going to do wonderful because it is so important. You know, that's one of the things people stress about, especially in the field of health and wellness, you know, um, having a pure heart, having a good mindset is so important because really, you know, how can you love when your, your heart is full of hate? Or how can you love when you're when you have trauma in your life and and your heart is just you have is is it has gaps in it and so so to speak and I think mm -hmm. this is great because this is going to show people how to really show love and and to be able to open their hearts to others and I, I think this is wonderful. Now on your website you have your books. Do you offer anything else on your website? Um, I have my books listed and um. I am going to have a, this is upcoming. I haven't mm -hmm. put it on there yet, but this is upcoming. I'm going to have a page where I will put all of my podcasts that I have done. Wonderful. Including, yes. Including this one in, in any, cause I've done about 20 podcasts um, since October. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put all of them on there. And, um, and I have any events that are coming up like my book signing that I had a couple of weeks ago, I had a um, thing on my website about it. And so um, it, my website is going to be, you know, where you would go to find events, um, to find information about my books, as well as, you know, listen to any of my podcasts. And you can also um, sign up and, or 
I think I've got connect with me is the words on my website. You can connect with me and um, put in your email address. And I will also send any new subscribers to my website a mm -hmm. um, small gift. It's a blog, one of my blogs. That's how I started out writing. I started with blogs. And I will send um, one of those to anybody that signs up. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. And before we go, tell everybody once again the title of your book so they don't forget it. It is Straighten Your Crown, Navigating Life's Challenges with Grace. I love it. Oh my God. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to read it. This has been amazing. You have written a series of great books. And don't forget that Debbie has not just one book. She has a several books out right now. So check them out and check out her new book. And thank you so much for coming on the show. I love having you on. You are just a world of inspiration and motivation. And thank you so much for sharing your words and sharing the words of God with us. And I am so happy to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. All right. You too.